Aisha radiallahu anha in the night she woke up. And it was her habit, because she loved Rasulullah so much, to always move her arms around to check if Rasulullah is still lying down beside her. One night, Rasulullah was next to her and he was leaning on his elbow and looking into Aisha radiallahu anha's eyes until she fell asleep. Then suddenly he slowly got up put his cloak on, wore his shoes, and he went out of the house. Aisha radiallahu anha woke up and she put her arm out and she couldn't feel Rasulullah next to her. So what did she think? She thought that Rasulullah had left her to go to one of his other wives. So she put on her jilbab and her khimar and went out into the night. She said, no one could see me because I was wearing dark and it was dark night. And I followed the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And where did I find him? I found that he had gone to al baqiyah the graveyard of the Muslims. And he was standing up with his arms up and his head down and he was crying heavily, heavily. When Rasul was alone, that's when he cried the most. His beard was soaked, his chest was wet and he was making dua for the Muslims of the grave. Aisha radiallahu anha then quickly went back to her room, afraid that Rasul would see her. When he came back and arrived, Rasul noticed something different. And he said, what's different, Ya Aisha? And she got up and said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm sorry. I thought and assumed that you had gone and you were going to betray me, meaning go to another one of your wives. Rasul tapped on her chest lightly and he said to her, would you assume that the messenger of your Lord will ever betray his flock? Never. Since that day, she never thought this about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One night, Aisha radiallahu anha moved her arm around and her hand touched the soles of his foot. Now, if you're moving around and you touch the soles of a foot, where would the foot be? I mean, if it's on the ground, you can't touch the sole. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had his feet up and he was in sujood. And Aisha radiallahu anha feels the soles of his feet and she realizes that he's been praying all night. She looks at him and his beard is soaked with tears. His chest is soaked with tears. What kind of a cry is that? She said to him, Ya Rasulullah, give your body some rest. Allah has already given you, granted you this gift of automatically forgiving everything. You know what he said to her? Should I not be a grateful servant? And you know what dua he was making? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive the believers and to look after them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to cry for his ummah more than what he ever cried for anything else. One day Aisha radiallahu anha said to him, Ya Rasulullah, can you make dua for me? So he said, Oh Allah, forgive Aisha in her secret and in her open. Forgive Aisha for what she has done in the past and any sin that she will ever do in the future. Then Aisha radiallahu anha was so happy that she started to giggle and laugh so much to the point where she couldn't even hold her head up straight. The Prophet said, are you not happy with what I said? And then she said, how could I not be happy with your dua, Ya Rasulullah? It's the best and I feel so privileged that you made this special dua for me. You know what Rasulullah said to her? He said, Ya Aisha, I swear by Almighty Allah that this is the dua I make for my ummah in every single salat I pray. Then one day they saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam crying and he lifted his arms up when he reached the verses about Ibrahim Alaihi Salam saying and Nuh and the other prophets saying, these people, O oh my Lord, are in your care. If you want to forgive them, you forgive them. If you want to torture them, then you can torture them. Every matter is to you, Ya Allah. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam thought about his ummah. He thought about our sins. He thought about our shortcomings. And you know what he did? He started to cry immensely. They never never saw Rasulullah cry this much in their life. Aisha radiallahu says, I never saw him cry this much. The Sahaba said, we never saw a puddle of tears underneath Rasulullah as this much. What was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying when he heard these verses? He was saying, Allahumma ummati ummati. Allahumma ummati ummati. Oh Allah, please look after my ummah. Please look after my ummah. Please look after my ummah. 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 And this was before he died sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by about four months. Three months before he died, he went to the grave of the shuhada and the grave of the baqir and then he made a long dua for the Muslims and he said to them, you are in Jannah insha'Allah and then he stopped and said, the only thing I'm going to miss so badly is meeting my brothers and my sisters. Abu Huraira looked at him and he said, Ya Rasulullah, are you okay? We're here. We are your brothers, your sisters. We're here. Why are you saying this? He said, no, Ya Abu Huraira, you you are not my brothers and sisters. You are my companions. My brothers and sisters, they are not born yet. They are the people who believed in me, but never met me. He is talking about us. He said, Ya Abu Huraira, I will be awaiting for them at the fountain of Kawthar on the day of judgment, and I will call them one by one. I will look at them and I will recognize their faces. And I will say, you, 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 
you come drink. While the angels are standing at the borders and they're preventing the hypocrites and every other disbeliever. They said, Ya Rasulullah, how will you know them when you've never seen them? And Rasulullah said, Ya Abu Huraira, let me give you an example of a farmer who has many horses. He has among these horses dark black horses with no other color on them. And among them there are horses with stripes on their faces, their necks and their legs. Isn't he able to easily tell apart these horses from them? He said very easily, Ya Rasulullah. He said, that's how my ummah will come to me on the day of judgment. They will have nur coming out of their faces, their arms and their legs. They said, Ya Rasulullah, where is this nur from? And he replied by saying, this is because of the wudu which they used to make in the former life and their prayers. Your only concern is your ummah, Ya Rasulullah. Your only concern is us, Ya Rasulullah. This is the only thing that you are crying about, Ya Rasulullah. Wallahi, we need it. Wallahi, we die for it. Ya Habibi, Ya Rasulullah. Truly, we love him more than our own parents because on the day of judgment, your parents will bear innocence from you. You will bear innocence from your parents. Your parents will come to you crying and saying, son, daughter, was I not a good mother and father? Please give me one hasana, one hasana to save me this day. And you will say to them, father and mother, wallahi, you were the best parents, but I cannot even risk one hasana. Then we will go to the prophets one after another. Adam will refuse us. Nuh alayhi salam will refuse us. Ibrahim alayhi salam will refuse us. Musa alayhi salam. Isa alayhi salam will say, I am afraid of the same thing that you are afraid of. Go away from me. And finally we reach Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will put his head on the ground. And then he will lift it up and say, standing on the sirat above hellfire. And he will say, Allahumma ummati ummati. Oh Allah, save my ummah, save my ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had said to him, Ya Muhammad, irfa ra'sak, lift your head up. Washfa' tu shafa' and intercede, I will give you intercession. Was'al tu'ta, and ask for anything I will give you. And what do you think he will ask? He will dare to stand up and say, Oh Allah, my ummah, my ummah.